members, members, it's the appointed time and we have a quorum. Members, please stay at your seat. Let's start the meeting. Uh, point of order, members, Miss Elizabeth Quad. Again, I see that members of the uh, Burned With Us camp are absent, yet they have placed irrelevant placards at their seats. Please make arrangements for them to be taken away and condemn them for not attending the meeting. Mr. Ben Chang, I often see these uh, irrelevant um, placards. And the placard says that uh, one country, two system is dead. I think they're cursing the um, one country, two system, hoping that it will die. Would you please stop them from coming in so that we don't have to bother security guards to take them away? Ms. Chang, are you going to say the same thing? As usual, we do not allow uh, props or displays that are irrelevant to, to agenda items. I don't see any members sitting over there. I ask the security guards to remove them. Please. If it's a point of order, please raise your hands. Mr. Stephen Hall, I think you have not expressed yourself um, accurately. Whether there is anyone sitting there or not, these placards will have to be taken away. Irrelevant placards cannot be displayed or placed uh, in meetings, particularly those that, that would cause obstruction. Thank you. I call to order the meeting of the House Committee. Item number one, confirmation of minutes of meeting. A minutes of the special meeting held on the 13th of March 2020. Bra paper number CB bracket 21240 stroke, uh, stroke 19 to 20. B minutes of the special meeting held on the 20th of March 2020. Paper number CB bracket 21241 stroke 19 to 20. Item C. Minutes of the fifth meeting held on the fifteenth of the nineteenth of June twenty twenty. Paper number CB bracket two one two four four stroke nineteen to twenty. These minutes of meeting have already been given to members before the meeting. So far members have not uh, proposed any amendments. I ask members to confirm these three sets of minutes of meetings. Any objections? No. Confirmed. Two matters arising. Report by the Chairman on her meeting with the Chief Secretary for Administration. I, with the Deputy Chair, has expressed members' views on Monday. Concerns expressed in the last uh, House Committee meeting. They cover the Health Code, the Anti-Epidemic Fund, the uh, concessionary transport fare between those aged between 60 and 64, creation of jobs as well as um, um, order of business relating to legislation and um, bills. The CS said that on health code, the government has been under the framework of um, prevention and control of a disease of um, Guangdong and Macau as well as uh, Hong, uh, Hong Kong. Making uh, have been making discussions. There are so far 14 laboratories and hospitals that can provide the tests. The government expects that with competition, the testing fees will be driven. Uh, fees uh, will be driven down. However, uh, for out of caution, uh, the Guangdong as well as Hong Kong government uh, will put in place a pilot scheme and taking small steps to consider offering exemption to people who have to travel amongst these three places for business or uh, for um, similar reasons. They will be exempted from the 14-day quarantine. quarantine. When the details are ironed out, a w the uh, announcements will be made. Two, under the anti-epidemic fund, there are so far 60 different uh, programs being launched covering different areas. The government has been talking to stakeholders, trying to understand the impact of the pandemic on them. The government could, will continue to maintain flexibility, and if um, conditions are right, offer various assistance to different sectors as well as practitioners. 
Three, in relation to transport fare concessionary fees covering those between the age of 60 and 64, the uh, Labor and Welfare Bureau has already asked asked uh, their uh, consultant to find a practical solution for implementation in their review. The uh, research is uh, going to be finalized soon. The government will wait for the receipt of the uh, report before making announcement of the implementation details. Four, the government understand that uh, for those tenants that have been allocated a unit in uh, Chunyang Estate in Fotan face uh, housing needs. Depending on the development of the pandemic, the government will consider whether to continue to use um, this housing estate as uh, facilities and will make an announcement as soon as possible. Five, in relation to creation of jobs, the government has, under the anti-epidemic funds, earmarked $6 billion to create 30,000 jobs um, in the coming two years in the public and private sectors. As at mid-June, 700 government um, posts have already been filled, and they also are conducting a recruitment exercise for 6,000 jobs. The government bureaus, as well as departments, have been talking to different um, sectors and uh, professions, say, for example, survey, engineering, landscape, etc. They will uh, consider launching suitable um, employment schemes in due course. Well, uh, the three programs launched in June and July will offer 3,000 time-limited posts. In relation to the um, resumption of second debate of bills, the government said that uh, there will be 13 such bills um, on the 8th of July. The government expects that um, hopefully all these um, debates will be completed before the end of the session on the 18th of June. I ask members to note that Mr. Horace Jung as well as uh, Mr. Gary Chan has sent me a letter on the 24th of June asking for a special meeting of House Committee on the Arrangement of the Health Code. I've already instructed the clerk to send a letter uh, of request uh, to the CS attached with the two letters. So far, we have not received any reply from the CS. A number of members have already pressed the button. Please be succinct. One minute. Ms. Alice Mack. Of course, I do hope that the CS will come to the meeting to talk, to tell us about the implementation of the health code arrangement. Well, I have received from over 400 uh, families asking for assistance. They are cross-boundary families. They need to come to go back to the mainland, but they have a job here in Hong Kong. They cannot, um, they cannot possibly do the 14-day um, quarantine on both sides. Please take into account their needs. Under the pilot scheme, please include cross-boundary families. I heard from you, Chairman, that um, well, the pilot scheme will only cover people who have to come uh, to Hong Kong or go to Guangdong or Macau on business matters. Please do consider the urgent need of cross-boundary families. And I need the CS to come to explain about how they are going to take care of uh, the, the needs of these families. Ms. Elizabeth Quart, please ask the CS to launch the health code as soon as possible. They should cover Macau as well as cross-boundary families. I heard from um, Dr. Lo, Ch Lo Chong Mao, the dean, said that, um, well, um, the cost of these um, testing agents can be as cheap as $15, but in Hong Kong, it will cost um, close to $3,000 for such tests. Why can't the government buy in bulk, maybe uh, also buy in bulk uh, with the Guangdong province to drive down cost? On top of that, please follow up uh, with the CS that according to the policy address delivered on the 14th of January, those between the age of 60 and 64 will enjoy a $2 transport fees. But now we're told that uh, it will only take place next year. It's a very simple matter. Please implement uh, these uh, transport concessionary fares for those between 60 and 64 as soon as possible. Mr. Gary Chan, I send you a letter asking for a special meeting. There are many problems with the health code. 
the high testing fees, slow progress, and uh, a small quota, people who have families on the mainland, and those who have to work across the border uh, encounter problems, but they are ignored. A lot of families, because of the quarantine arrangement, cannot see each other, and some of them also have their work affected. Now you cover businessmen and professionals, and the scope is too limited. I ask the CS not to take it slow. Come to the House Committee for a special meeting as soon as possible. If he is busy, perhaps can we extend the House Committee by one or two hours asking the CS to come to talk to us? I do think that my wish is shared by a number of members. Mr. Ronick Chen. I do agree that there should be a special meeting asking the CS to come to talk to us about health code. I'm concerned about um, the exemption on the financial services sector. Currently, it's uh, for policy bureaus to decide who will get exemption. The FSTB now covers uh, management of uh, listed companies as well as accountants. I've expressed um, our, v our views that uh, there is an urgent need for the banking sector to have the exemption. I've made an application to Mr. Hoy, the secretary. Is it mutually exclusive uh, for the uh, exem for the exemption and the health code to coexist? People from the financial services sector said that uh, it only covers Hong Kong and Guangdong. What about other provinces? Will there be a timetable for the scope to cover them as well? Mr. Yu Si Wing. We've mentioned a number of times about health code. Well, the um, Tourism Commission has uh, talked to some laboratories. They don't want to spend too much resources to um, on these um, facilities to drive down cost. Can the government set down rules or a, or time or a timetable to at least give a direction about the future development so that laboratories can make preparations? The fees stay high. What they need is. Um, is a, is a direction given by the government. I hear that uh, in July there will be opening up between uh, Macau and Hong Kong, but if the fees stay high, it uh, uh, these uh, opening up will exist in name only. Please give us some specific um, details. Mr. Holden Chow, Madam Chair, whenever I have uh, uh, visit the community with Mr. Long Chi Chang. Uh, the members of the public would ask us about the health code. It's been uh, weeks after weeks and months after months, and we have uh, yet to see it materialize. So we understand the priority will be given to uh, those uh, who have business and um, official needs to travel between the two places. There are a lot of people who need to uh, travel across the boundary to work, but they don't know whether they'll be covered. And I think uh, 1,600 is uh, really exorbitant in the mainland. The cost uh, for tests is uh, uh, $200. And how come the administration has failed to respond to uh, such requests? And the need of uh, cross-boundary families and uh, special needs of families, um, as of now, I don't see them being covered. So uh, with the introduction of a health code system, you should take care of the needs of cross-boundary families. Thank you. Mr. Chen Hanpeng. Thank you. I understand that the uh, CS and uh, the administration would like uh, market forces to drive down the uh, test fees. Why is it that for important matters, the government allow market forces to uh, play? So uh, what if uh, the fees do not go down? The government is uh, responding too slowly. And uh, the health code system is not something just for the rich. It uh, must uh, uh, be affordable to even grassroots families. Now, if we allow uh, competition in the market, the fees may even be higher. What if uh, test uh, kits are not available or in short supply? And as for the $2 
fare, tr transport fare concession scheme for those uh, over 60. I understand that the administration has uh, started a consultancy and then uh, results will be available uh, in the middle of this year. Now they are still waiting for a report from the consultants. Chair, can you ask the CS for A to give us a date, the implementation date? There is no need to give us the uh, contents of uh, the consultant's report. Mr. Lang Chi Chang, I agree with a colleague's suggestion that the CS for A should meet with us uh, to give us an account of uh, the health code system. Uh, some there are so many rumors around. Some say that uh, come Saturday there will be some announcement from the public, and uh, elsewhere we heard that uh, the system is not yet available. This is something purely administrative, and members of the public are eager to have a health code for movement between the two places, in particular, uh, those uh, residing in the mainland and uh, working in Hong Kong cannot come back, and they are not eligible for CS. A. So should they starve, the government should not just turn a blind eye to their plight. And as for uh, the $2 fare concession for those over 60, why do we have to wait until next year? Uh, does our secretary know? Doesn't our secretary know what to do? Must we rely on the consultancy? Mr. Stephen Ho, I agree with members here that we should invite the CS for A to meet with us. Um, uh, in the past, uh, the burn with us camp uh, will stir up troubles, and as a result, we just waste our time. But this time, uh, since they don't attend meetings anymore, perhaps we can have some fruitful discussion with the CSA. And then uh, we're supposed to complete uh, the uh, examination of vessels and also a submission of uh, documents uh, before the 16th of August. And yet, because of uh, the health code is not yet available of a problem. Well, even if the health code is uh, available, you have to understand that the cost can be anything between 1400 and uh, 1400 not to mention uh, the consulting consultation fees. So the health code system may well uh, become uh, something a privilege for the rich only. So we've heard about the health code a number of times, but uh, we haven't seen anything concrete, and this is not the behavior of a responsible government. Mr. Lowai Kwok, we like to talk about the Hong Kong, Chua, Macau, Greater Bay Area, but when it comes to the issue of health code, I can only see GBA involving Guangdong and Macau, and Hong Kong has fallen badly behind. According to report, in Macau, uh, they have um, mutual recognition of their health codes for more than a month. 15,000 uh, Macauis and uh, close to 20,000 mainlanders now can uh, switch their Macau health code for a uh, Guangdong count. And then uh, 5,800 uh, people from um, uh, Macau and 53,000 people from China that can switch their health codes. And this has been up and running for more than a month. So what are we doing here in Hong Kong? Livelihood aside, now uh, the engineering sector needs to travel to the mainland to work. So this is a uh, big issue. Mr. Buzano, I agree that the CS for A should be invited to meet with us to discuss the health code issue because the community have a lot of um, um, have received uh, different um, stories about uh, the operation of the code and the fees so and so forth. So I think the CS as well as the administration should think of a way uh, to um, sort out things. Otherwise, uh, rumors uh, will. Uh, um, even uh, make what matters worse. So, please invite the CS to meet with us. And uh, as regards uh, the occupation of Chunyang Estate, uh, the CS reply is disappointing. I understand that the uh, epidemic is still uh, volatile, but then for the prospective tenants of Chunyang Estate, they face tremendous difficulties. Uh, the new term will start in September, and these families are still living in subdivided units. Uh, Chair, please uh, relay our concerns to the CS once again. Mr. Shukafai, 
Well, for the health code issue, we've been discussing it for three weeks uh, in the House Committee as well as in the Health Services Panel. We have uh, raised our concern to the Secretary for Food and Health. I think uh, we should allow stranded people uh, in the mainland to come back to Hong Kong uh, to uh, address the economic impact. And I have seen uh, persons uh, in charge of uh, a large chain uh, stranded uh, in the mainland, and he has to come back for important meetings. So it's not just uh, the um, bosses and employers that are affected. And because the test fees are so high, they are hardly affordable to members of the public. Macau has already uh, successfully implemented such a code, and if we can't, what are we doing? You have to tell the CS that he must not drag his feet anymore. Mr. Miss Rebecca, uh, Miss Yenis Yong, yes, also on health code. Many members want a special meeting convened on this topic. This is an urgent matter. We have uh, uh, been talking about this for two weeks, and in an oral question in the council chair, you also asked uh, a similar question. Many cross-boundary families are waiting. So uh, if the test has to be done once every seven days, now the price is a problem and you allow market forces to work it is unacceptable. The government must uh, shoulder a part of the cost so the government can suppress the uh, test fees uh, by uh, using uh, test kits made in the mainland, for instance. I have received uh, many uh, cases. Well. Uh, they uh, have, um, or they might have uh, relatives um, who passed away uh, on the mainland. When they come back, they ask me whether the health code is uh, already in force. So you must ask the CS to respond to ASAP. Uh, since uh, many members uh, have a lot of questions uh, on uh, my meeting with the uh, CS for A. Well, I uh, understand your concern, and then our term is uh, coming to an end. So I've allowed you to uh, spend 30 minutes on this already. If I may, uh, borrow 10 minutes from the Finance Committee. Is the chairman of the FC um, uh, allow, uh, okay with this? Yes. Dr. Zhang Lai Wen. I said that the Senate of uh, the U.S. passed a Hong Kong Autonomy Act this morning, and that is with the uh, implementation of the national security law in Hong Kong, the autonomy of Hong Kong would be undermined. As we all know, there has never been autonomy in Hong Kong. Article 12 of the Basic Law is very clear. Hong Kong enjoys a high degree of autonomy with directly under the uh, Central People's Government of the PLC. And uh, the contents of the act is uh, rather outrageous. Uh, not just uh, public officials, but uh, private uh, citizens and enterprises would also be sanctioned. I think this is a threat to uh, Hong Kong. So perhaps the CSYA should write to them and tell them clearly that we enjoy a high degree of autonomy, but not full autonomy. And if uh, they threaten Hong Kong people like this, we don't rule out imposing sanctions uh, to those who uh, advocated or started or such um, acts like this. Mr. Stephen Ho? No, no, no. I, uh, regarding uh, your script about your meeting with the CS for A, did you uh, mention to him that we would uh, like the CS to come and meet with us? I did. Well, we asked for that last week. Well, I uh, relayed your requests to her, and uh, this week we have got a letter from uh, members here. Many members have strongly asked that the CS come to meet with us on topics not just uh, the health code, uh, but immigration uh, policies and also control of um, diseases. And I think it is um, appropriate for the CS to lick a team and uh, come to give us a report. I think uh, the CS uh, is following our 
proceedings as well. I hope uh, it, he can respond as soon as possible and uh, launch uh, the health code system ASAP. Mr. Michael Tian, are you on the same topic? Mr. Michael Tian, you uh, raised a question about the Chunyang estate and uh, the uh, CSA, uh, if need be, if, uh, if uh, the uh, estate uh, needs to be uh, used for the epidemic, he will make an announcement. Now, uh, the uh, traffic concession is fair for those who are 65. Well, many of them uh, use a green card. And now, uh, the uh, MTR staff may uh, check you, may uh, check on your ID and your age. So I think the government just need to relax the uh, age, eligibility age. I've been frequently scolded by people in the community. Those who are over 65, they are using that um, card. And you need only to announce that those who are between 60 and 64, they can use the same card and uh, uh, for public transport, and they won't be, um, and that would not be against the law, and that would do. All right. If uh, the issues are directly related to a particular panel, uh, you should uh, take it up at the respect panel first. However, many panels have had their last meeting of the term, and uh, this term is also drawing to uh, an end, and I'm happy to uh, relay members' concerns to the CS. And Mr. Michael Tian, for the ECU you just mentioned, I believe we have um, uh, put it to the administration a number of times, and I think uh, you have uh, represented the wish of those between 60 and 64, and they wonder how come the government has not introduced her this earlier. All right, matters are rising from previous business meetings. Um, we have LS 101, um, uh, LS 102, stroke 1920, um, report from the Legal Services Division. Yes. Our report covers three regulations. The first is uh, Pharmacy and Poisons Amendment Number 3, Regulation 2020, to add three substances uh, to uh, Schedules 1 and 3, so that these substances are subject to restrictions with respect to their sales, supply, labeling, and storage, and they can only be sold by retail upon a prescription given by a registered medical practitioner, registered dentist, or registered veterinary surgeon. And among the three, Two will also be included in the into the poisons list set out in Schedule 10, so that they can only be sold on registered premises of an authorized seller of poisons by a registered pharmacist or in the presence and under the supervision of a registered pharmacist. Legal Notice 126 uh, took effect on the day of publication on the 19th of June 2020. Does member want to set up a subcommittee for LN126? No, please continue, legal advisor. For the other two, that is uh, LN127 and LN128, they are made under pensions increase ordinance and wid widows and orphans pension increase ordinance. It is uh, to declare that starting from the 1st of April 2020, in relation to basic pensions payable to ex officers and dependents, as well as pensions payable to widows and orphans of officers, there will be an increase by 2.9%. This is formulated in accordance with an established mechanism, that is, a, an increase of the average monthly CPIA. In relation to LN127 and LN128, do we need a subcommittee? No. Let me remind members that in relation to the subsidiary legislation, deadline for making amendment is the second council meeting of the next session. If it's decided to, uh, that, that it should be extended, it can be extended to the 21st day of the second council meeting of the next session or the first one after that. Item for business for the council meeting of 8th of July 2020. A questions. There has already been 22 questions set, 6 seeking oral reply and 16 seeking written reply. 
B. Government bills, first reading and second reading debate to be adjourned. We have not received any notice. C. Government bills, second reading debate to resume consideration by Committee of the Whole Council and third reading. There are 13 bills that will resume second reading debate. The President will consider the order proposed by the administration before making a decision. The 13 bills can be found in Annex 1. In short, well, let me give let me give you a report. First, court proceedings, electronic technology bill, two statute law miscellaneous provision bill 2019, three evidence amendment bill 2018, four freight container safety amendment bill 2019, five road traffic legislation parking spaces amendment bill 2019, six pharmacy and poisons amendment bill 2019, seven fisheries protection amendment bill 2019, eight. Broadcasting and Telecommunications Legislation Amendment Bill 2019 9. Mandatory Provident Fund Schemes Amendment Bill 2019 10. Inland Revenue Amendment Profit Tax Concessions for Insurance Related Businesses Bill 2019 11. Insurance Amendment Number 2 Bill 2020 12. Insurance Amendment Bill 2020 13. Limited Partnership Bill Fund Bill So there are 13 bills to resume second reading debate. Members, please make good use of uh, the time. If we cannot finish the uh, sec the second reading and the third reading, as per convention, they will have to start afresh in the next session. D. Government motion. We have not received any notice. B. Members' motions. The council meeting will deal with uh, items uh, standing over from previous meetings. Item 5. Report of Bills, Committees and Subcommittees. Report of the Subcommittee on Building Minor Works Amendment Regulation 2020 and Building Planning Amendment Regulation 2020. I ask Mr. Lowe Kwok to give a report on behalf of the Chairperson, Mr. Tony Te. Thank you. Chairperson, the two amendment regulations seek to include more small-scale building works under the Minor Works Control System to provide for transitional arrangements and to make consequential amendments. The subcommittee has completed the scrutiny. Members support the two amendment regulations as it helps the public and the trade by including more small-scale works into the system. Members, on the other hand, urged the government to put in place sufficient supervision for ensuring the quality and safety of these small-scale works. They should also launch publicity and public education to inform the public. Since members expected an increase in volume of work, they asked the government to make sure that there is an adequate pool of prescribed registered contractors in carrying out such work in order to maintain competitive prices. In addition, members expressed concern on the safety of maintenance work on the external part of buildings. They inquired about such safety measures. I asked members to note the, the deliberations of subcommittees, uh, it, which is set out in the report. Thank you, Mr. Lowe. Item 6. Position on Bills Committee and Subcommittee. As at Wednesday, 24th of June, there are three Bills Committee in action. There are six subcommittees under the House Committee, that is, a three on subsidiary legislation, one on policy matters, and two on legal affairs. There are six subcommittees on policy matters under panel. The session will end. On the 18th of, well, the 17th of July, I ask subcommittees and bills committees to plan accordingly, so that they can finish their work before the end of the session. Item seven. Any other business? No other business. Meeting adjourned. Thank you very much.